This is Seasons of Discontent with your hosts, Rick Snyder and Matt Combs. Welcome to Seasons of Discontent, Season 9, Episode 25, brought to you by Rick Snyder's Washington on social media. And I'm Rick Snyder. I'm Matt. And we're back discussing all things Washington sports and life as part of my party's social media network. So, we took a week, couple weeks off for stuff, but we're back, and guess what? They're still losing, Matt. Who, who knew? Hey, did, now, they lo- did they somehow lose during the bye week, too? <laughs> I couldn't remember. Man, at 4 and 10 now. This is since Joe Gibbs's first retirement, 93. They've, they've had 15 losing seasons, which is basically half of them. In the 31 years before Gibbs came, they had two 10-plus mm. uh, lost seasons. Now, they played 14 games a lot then. But still, it just shows you, man, this is just – it's it's the norm. That's why you're – you know, at the end of losing to the Rams 28-20 on Sunday, for a brief moment there, you thought, God, could they tie this game up? I mean, they're down. There was they did nothing the whole game. Jacoby Brissett comes in, a couple of nice looking touchdowns. Rams are in defense, prevent defense. But of course, Washington screws it up because they took four minutes almost to score down on the goal line and never got another possession. Mm-hmm. And that was bad coaching there. So from bad play to bad coaching, it's just all getting worse. Yeah, and there were a lot of a lot of glaring issues yesterday. Um, one of them is a ongoing occurrence and that's Ron and clock management. Ron has never been able to manage the clock in the four years that he's been here. And it baffles me. Like bring somebody in to hold a stop clock or a stopwatch and say, Hey dude, you might want to consider taking a a timeout. Um, but you know, honestly, Rick, the big, I think the big glaring issue yesterday was you spent a first round pick this year on a cornerback. That's clearly not a first round cornerback. I, I hate that everybody's picking on Manny Forbes and I wanted to give him time, but I have seen nothing out of the kid this year. We were promised a ball hawking fast corner. We were all worried about his size. He can't even cover. Like he's just kind of standing around lost. Quan Martin showed up yesterday. So that pick is looking somewhat good, but at the end of the day, uh, if we take a look at all four years so far of Ron, the, the glaring issue is he cannot build a roster. Uh, somebody, and, and I know this is going to be a little twisted, but somebody posted the starting five offensive linemen when he got here compared to the one that he has now. Now, honestly, Trent Williams wasn't coming back regardless of who the coach was. He was pissed at the franchise. He wanted out. He hated Dan Snyder. Um, was it uh, Chase Roulier or, or one of the guys retired for injury? Um, you know, Brandon Sheriff was a, was a tag that they didn't want to spend. So he was gone because they couldn't afford the money that he got. But still you're talking about guys, you know, Trent Williams is still halted as one of the halted as one of the best left tackles in the game. And you traded him away for what a bag of footballs and a, and a hoagie. I mean, that's what it seems like, but I, I think the biggest issue is personnel decisions and, you know, in the in the category of too little, too late, they cut Cameron Cheeseman today. That was a long snapper that you drafted and traded up to pick. And he almost got your Pro Bowl, probably the best player in your team, Tress Way, almost got him put on the shelf for the rest of the season yesterday because of his snapping, his, his ineffective snapping. They brought guys in after week two, and you decided, no, we're going to stick with Cheeseman. And now you almost got Tressway murdered yesterday. It's just the ineptitude is is come to an end. I, I just honestly, Rick, I can't wait for them to blow this thing up. Okay, for a few things, uh, no update today with Rivera about uh, the punter. So it could be in concussion protocol. We'll see. You know, we know more Wednesday about that. Uh, and I agree, Cheeseman was gone. They haven't signed a replacement yet. They went ahead and cut him without even getting a backup ready. But they've tried out guys before, so they'll find somebody pretty soon. Forbes was interesting. He only played six snaps. And when Rivera was asked about it today, he said, well, we were working a matchup thing with Quan." Now, a few weeks ago, Quan couldn't have found the, the you know, 
Couldn't found anything. He was just, it looked like a bust. He's playing better, but now you're sitting down Forbes after six picks with this again. You know, he's missed essentially five games this season between injuries and benching. Mm-hmm. Wow. Disaster. I, I was really surprised when they took him. And, I, you know, in training camp, he looked okay, but he can't handle the speed of the game. He's getting knocked off too much. He's got to add some weight so he, the receivers can't push him away uh, like they've been doing. I mean, it's a, it's an all, you know, blank show, as they're, as they're saying uh, on there. But, you know, one of the things I was really disappointed with was EB calling, you know, consecutive runs up the middle down that goal line at the end. Of course, they got stopped at the one both times. After they had tried the same play against the Rams a couple of times earlier, can't crack an egg. And yet you got four minutes to go, and you then you waste three before you finally score, and you don't get a chance. To, to get another possession to tie the game. Yeah. And I thought even calling wasn't very good uh, in this one. And so when people always yell, they should have fired Ron. Well, if you had fired Ron, well, Del Rio has gone too. And now everybody wants to get rid of EB, which there's, I haven't seen a fall from grace like this since RG3 came. Uh, and it didn't happen in the same season, you know, but everybody loved EB, should have made him head coach in the beginning of the season. Now everybody wants to ride him out on a rail. I don't expect him to, to be here when they make changes. We're three weeks away from the end. I tell people, just just enjoy Christmas, and this will be over afterwards uh, on there. But, you know, everybody looks like they've clocked out. I mean, Ron talked today a little bit about a little bit about Sam Howe. It was an interesting comment he made. He said yesterday Howe is still the starter the rest of the season. Now it, the team has been eliminated. Jacoby comes in. Plays well. Now, this is a totally different situation because it's garbage time. There's so much there that anybody just says the stuff, they know what they're talking about. Well, the line back block better with them because the Rams were forcing the issue at that point. There's so much in that. But somebody said, if you were still going for the playoffs, you know, would Hal start or would, you know, Brissett maybe coming in a hot hand? This has happened before with other times. And he said, oh, it's an interesting thing. You know, we'd have to look at it. And I thought, Oh, and that's something. Now, I don't expect Brissett to start on Sunday, but I don't know anymore with this group. They can they say one thing and anything can happen. You suddenly, you know, Hal's got a stiff shoulder. <laughs> you know how that goes. You know, and I still have a bet with Grant Paulson at 106.7, the fan where I worked it, that uh, Jake Fromm would start a game. I might still be alive on that. Who knows? Yeah. Even though he's not. <clears throat> yeah. Week 18 against Dallas, it'll be the Jake Fromm show, just like Hal last year. <laughs> But, you know, it, it's funny, too. You know, we've talked about Eric Bieniemy on this show a lot. And a similar situation just occurred out in San Diego. Well, L.A., whatever you want to call it. They're still the San Diego Chargers. Um, they fired Brandon Staley. And Kellen Moore, who's the offensive coordinator, who's their highly touted offensive coordinator that they stole from Dallas and all this stuff, um, he said, no, I don't want the interim job because it's going to damage my reputation. And that's exactly what would have happened here. They fired Ron. The enemy would have not taken the coaching job because he doesn't want to damage his reputation and the possibility that he could be a head coach somewhere else next year. But, um, yeah, I, look, I'm still kind of up in the air when it comes to the enemy because we have seen growth. We have seen progression with Sam Howe. Maybe it's not as fast as most people had thought. Maybe it's not as fast as most people had wanted it to be, but I have seen progression with Sam Howe. The ability for the kid, I mean, he got benched on Sunday, the ability for him to just have that short memory, that's something that you can't teach. And the kid's going to go out there Sunday, like nothing ever happened. Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe that's a detriment. We don't know, but, um, you know, he makes a mistake and he's able to recover from it. Uh, I, I do like that ability of his and, and the kid's got poison. Look, I, I, you know, this isn't to defend Sam Howe hour, but you know, at the end of the day, the kid's been sacked 53 times. I think this Thank line, you. 59 yeah. we're up to 59 but it's not at 100 pace anymore <laughs> so no it's thanks. definitely slowed down yeah but yeah and you brought up a good point too with the runs up the gut you know aaron donald wasn't even in on those goal line stands that's their highest paid player that's their all pro defensive lineman who they paid millions and millions of dollars he wasn't even in there during those because they didn't care sean McVay didn't care if they scored a touchdown and then, and then, you know, hey, I hate to say it, but it's Washington. They're going to find a way to shoot themselves in the foot anyway. And they did, you know, back and forth with penalties and pass interferences and push offs. Um, you know, I, I know this is not really on our rundown, but I did want to run this by you real quick. 
you know, one of the things that you've always talked about is is this team's ability or this team's need for a tight end. We need a tight end really bad, Rick. Um, Logan Thomas has really fallen out of graces with this offensive scheme. Uh, Cole Turner was not even active yesterday. John Bates is a blocking tight end for the most part who has made some pretty good catches, but he's not a catching tight end. This team is in desperate need of a good top tier tight end because you have a ro- essentially a rookie quarterback. A rookie quarterback safety valve is always the tight end. If you look at rookie tight end or rookie quarterbacks or young inexperienced quarterbacks, they always have great tight ends to bail them out when they need it. And that's something that Hal doesn't have. He I can't trust Logan Thomas. I can't trust uh, Cole Turner. You know, the this, the tight end that is a a glaring need on this team for the next next season. You know, you can find one of those in free agency better than you will in the draft. Uh, I'll say that. I mean, unless you want to. You can't spend a one on a tight end because that, that doesn't work here. Um, if you went down a little farther, drop down, you might, but that's not really what you want to see. You want to see an offensive tackle. Yeah, you're not in the curve. position to draft like a Sam Laporta. You know, Sam Laporta was drafted in the first round by the Detroit Lions, and Saturday had three touchdowns. I mean, we're not in the position to draft a tight end that high yet. They need to go offensive line. They need to go left tackle. Um they need to go right tackle. Their their first three or four picks <laughs> better have some offensive linemen mixed in. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, but you can't abandon the defense because they suck. <laughs> so, you know, you need a defensive end, uh, you know, suddenly. I mean, you know, you know, the interesting thing, Montez Sweat now leads the Bears and the Commanders in sacks. And I asked a friend of mine, a historian about it, has anybody ever done that in the same season? And he's like, what? And he's, he's still looking it up. I don't think so. He's going to finish definitely as the Bears leader. Might finish with the Commanders leader. How weird is that? Yeah. He's just been gone for what, six games? And it also just shows you the ineffectiveness that our coaching staff had in using those two guys. I know Chase Young's not setting the world on fire out in San San Francisco, but I think he had a sack yesterday. He had a couple couple tackles. Um, But, yeah, I mean – it just shows you the ineptitude that this coaching staff had when using those guys. And obviously Jack Del Rio is not here anymore. You know, it's just amazing to me too. That's another one, you know, kind of recapping the last couple weeks, you know, Del Rio, that defense was on fire the first year he got here. When did they finish like second in the league or something like that? What a mighty fall from grace in just a couple of years. Yeah. They have nothing working there. I mean, nothing. They, I mean, Hunt- they have no, they, like- they have no linebackers, Rick. They they have no linebackers for two guys on this team that are coaches and played linebacker in this league. They have zero linebackers that are worth anything. Yeah, of course. Last week when uh, you were out sick, or I was out sick, I forget who it was. It was me. Um, I'm still a little sick, if you couldn't tell. Okay. <laughs> you know which- we're we're in the period of colds that never end, apparently. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you have kids. Uh, but you know, of course, the arena's talk was all about. You know, moving over to Potomac Yards, which is an interesting thing. We could go on forever about. But the one thing I want to say is the Wizards. The Wizards are now 4-21, and and I got a, a PR release from Bat, BetMassachusetts.com. I get all these weird ones. That had Wes Unsell Jr. as the favorite to be the next NBA coach fired. And first of all, I've seen that. He doesn't deserve it. I mean, 4-21, and and you're not fired in the NBA? How is that possible? You know, I, I, so we talk about, you know, Ron all the time, but, but Wes has done awful. And they, and they have to score like 140 points to win. I've never seen anybody play so badly on defense. They have, there is no defense uh, on this. So I, I, you know, I like the old man. I don't really know the kid, but Wes got to do something. You want to build a big arena down the road? You better win a few games. Just like uh, actually, it's actually going to be a smaller arena from what I heard. Well, they don't need – well, I think – how big is the cap one? It's I think like cap 20. one is like 17, isn't it? Yeah, something if you add up all the whatevers. I mean, I, I – in a brief time we talked about it. I like the idea of going to Potomac Yards. I'm pretty much alone in this. But I think it's a chance to give you an entertainment complex that you can't do downtown D.C. They're now talking um, – the mayor's talking maybe about the FBI, which is moving out of town, taking that building, which is just a few blocks away. Uh I don't know if it would fit or not. It's a big building, but I don't think it would quite fit the arena. Yeah. Unless you 
smaller arena, and that's right on Pennsylvania Avenue uh, there. I, it's just like we take the commander stuff, we just switch mm. it over and talk to Wiz and Caps. But yeah, uh, I'll be honest with you, this this topic to me is intertwined between both teams. You move the Caps and Wiz down to Potomac Yard in Virginia. Well, D.C. kind of has egg on their face, don't you think? Maybe they're going to work a little bit harder to reclaim that that uh, RFK site and put the commanders back there. I think this works in Josh Harris and the commander's favor, honestly. I think D.C., you know, is, is going to, have, like I said, have a little egg on their face from losing two of their teams to – Virginia, even though it's only five miles away, I hate to tell you all this. It, there is a river in between it, but there's only five miles away. Um, but yeah, they uh, look. The Caps have always kind of been centralized in Virginia. Kettler Iceplex, where they practice, is in is up there off of Glebe Road. It's in Boston Commons Mall. Uh, you know, the 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 arena's going to be a couple miles down the road from that. I don't see uh, it really being that big of a deal. They're still going to keep cap one. They're moving the mystics back to cap one. You can offer cap one to Georgetown full time. There's going to be, there's still, he said, they're still going to have concerts and stuff at cap one. So, but look, Rick, you and I knew the writing was on the wall when the, when Ted said, Hey, give me $600 million as she's trying to court the uh, commanders back to DC, you knew something was up. Yeah. I, I don't believe that the mystics and all that wind up there. I could be a casino. Could be a lot of things, but I don't see this as all being a bad thing. Hmm. It's everybody, you know, just hyperbole, you know, doing all this. I don't see this as a bad deal. It's, it's five metro stops away, uh, you know, big deal for everybody in Maryland. It doesn't want to go a little farther. There's somebody in Virginia that's happy to come a little closer. It, yeah. It'll work. Yeah, and real, realistically, um, you know, like you said, it's it's it, it's it's definitely going to put. Muriel Bowser in a in a position where she needs to offer the yard, you know she needs to offer the whole ha can of beans <laughs> to bring the command oh, yeah. back. And the offer starts with a five hundred million dollar cash offer because you know Josh Harris is like, oh, you got a half billion in a kitty, good, I'll take that for starters mm -hmm. on the land for a good deal and, and, and whatever. So yeah, I do think that this really does move the commander so much closer. I mean, where are they going to go? Virginia isn't going to be out of the stadium bidding. They can't afford two of these. Maryland, Maryland's dumping all that money in the Pimlico. Oh, that's worth something. So, and I'm a horse racing guy. I don't believe that one. Um, they but I think that that's what they're saying. Maryland well, they, has quote unquote allotted funds to rehab Pimlico Raceway. They still yeah. got money tied up in the Orioles and and in the, in the Ravens. So yep. you know, see that's that's the weird dichotomy about our area is, you know, us in Maryland we're considered Washingtonians. But we do have that northern spot just 30 miles up the road that has two pro sports teams in it. You know, it's kind of a weird, weird situation. Yeah. <laughs> well, Pimlico deal really is falling apart because they had a deal and then COVID hit and time has gone on and costs have rocketed. And now they're pulling away from that deal. <laughs> so I don't expect Pimlico to be a player. Mm. All right, we got to get out of here. I'm Rick Snyder. I'm Matt. See you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to Seasons of Discontent with your hosts, Rick Snyder and Matt Combs. 